The year's 1996. Tendai Cherasica is a two-time defending state champion for St. Xavier High School. He's looking for that third state championship. And I'll go ahead and spoil it. He gets it, but we're not going to tell you how. Tendai, thanks for being here today. Now, this is, of course, Tendai's third video. If you haven't watched his 1995 and 1994 videos, you need to go check them out. Very, very good insight from Tendai. Going in, I asked you this in the 1995 and 1996, you're a senior. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're a two-time champion now. And, of course, social media didn't exist then, but bragging right. rights did. And like I said about uh, what Coach Cal says about Kentucky basketball, you're, it's everybody's Super Bowl, everybody's main event. You know, people talk about it the rest of their life if they – made a three-pointer against Anthony Davis, you know, or whoever, Carl Towns, they crossed over John Wall. But for you, wrestling, it's, he never pinned me. He, he may have beat me, but he didn't pin yeah. me, or, you know, I scored a point on him or whatever. Are you, you still feel like you're getting everybody's main, like, best shot, or people are just like, hey, we don't want no part of this guy? Yeah. You know, if I was honest about it, I'd say it was uh, probably the latter. A lot of folks had moved out of that 171 weight class at <laughs> this year, um, and so moved into 160 or up. Of course, they were going to run into some really, really tough competitors at the uh, 185, 189 weight class with uh, Miguel uh, Merritt there. And then uh, Wesley goodness. Gray. Yeah, those guys are just really strong competitors. So kind of uh, my senior year was able to own that weight class throughout the year. So what I really had to battle my senior year, and this is – uh, was a challenge which is battling complacency and, and yeah. uh, my goal really was about leaving a legacy you could t say hey state championships have been accomplished now how are you going to leave this sport uh, because my senior year I had already signed a scholarship or uh, on my way to signing a scholarship for uh, football to play at UofL so um, you know at this point it was what's the legacy I'm going to leave and I'm a, I'm a natural competitor so um, anytime I got on the mat, I was going to compete and, and want to win. I just It just hit me when you said that. You had you at 171, you had Miguel at 189, and you had Livingston at 215. Yeah. I, I just now, <laughs> that gone. That was yeah, a yeah, murderer's row. Yes, yes. My goodness yeah. gracious. It was, it was fun being at tournaments with those guys. Oh, my and, goodness. And just being able to see the talent that they have. I have so much respect for the uh, – the marriage and, and they're just awesome oh. great great wrestlers now if you haven't watched them i do have livingston's 1996 and 1997 we do have his 1995 we just didn't have it at the time we got with him i'm going to christian county Hoptown in may going to be meeting with about 30 guys doing all their videos so be looking for that but let's go through your bracket here yeah. first round you wrestle mark hall from dixie heights it says you win by fall it doesn't say how long yeah. it took but it goes by fall the next round, the quarterfinals, you wrestled Jason Asher from Caldwell County. Hmm. You win that by fall as well. Well, we get to the semifinals, and it says that you are supposed to wrestle Malcolm Johnson. Hmm. But it says Malcolm come in third, but it's got you winning by default. Kind of hmm. tell us the story, what happened there with that. You, you know, honestly, I wish I, I, wish I knew or remembered uh, you know, and even the fact that he came in third. So I don't know if there was an injury there or, uh, you know, what happened, uh, to be honest with you. That, that would be really interesting to, to kind of look back right. on history and, and know. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> but it, it's, what, it's got him Malcolm Johnson, Fort Knox, third place, and it's got him in the finals winning 13 to 9. So yeah. if you know what happened, put it in the description. That's right. I don't remember. You get to the finals, you're wrestling Jared Combs yeah. from Covington Scott. Now, don't say what happens. Okay. But you're talking about leaving a legacy. Yeah. What legacy did you, besides doing these videos on my YouTube channel all these years later, <laughs> what legacy did you want St. X to remember, the yeah. fans to remember, the coaches? What what legacy did Tendai Cherasica want to leave for everybody else to remember you by? Yeah. You know, it was really important for me, um, you know, especially with, you know, I go back to my early, early years when I just started wrestling and uh, all the coaches and, and all the different wrestlers and wrestling partners, those are the folks that really make you who you are. Um, and they had put so much faith and work and effort and love into me. Um, you know, part of that legacy, um, I wanted to go out uh, just as strong, if not stronger,
uh, than when I entered the sport. And so it was, it was important for me, again, not to take anything uh, for granted um, and really appreciate the moment. Um, right. And that was a real big one. I, I think you'll see a lot of that in um, kind of the, the prep for the finals, but uh, during the finals and, and even afterwards of just soaking it all up and, and trying to have an understanding of, um, again, where I came from and uh, the blessing of where I ended up. And um, that would be enshrined uh, forever uh, by winning a third state championship, which I also knew uh, was, was fairly rare. Right. Uh, not everybody gets... Uh, three, a lot of folks get one, some more get two, but uh, even fewer get two, get three. So uh, I wanted to make sure I, I went out on top. Just to kind of give you a perspective on that, 59, we just finished up. This is March 2022. We, we've had 59 seasons of Kentucky high school wrestling sanctioned by the KHSAA. There's been 10 four-time state champions and one five-time. I don't have the numbers on the three, but I can't yeah. imagine there's that yeah. many. Yeah. I can't yeah. imagine that there's – I would say more than probably 20 yeah. at, at most, yeah. if that. But now yeah. we're 1996. We have transitioned from a high school gym to an arena. We're at the Farnham Dungeon yeah. Center, the yeah. Dungeon yeah. in Frankfurt, under the lights. Tendai, yeah. let's make the trip, man. Let's, let's go, 1996. Let's do, let's do it. First time being under the lights, 1996, the first year held at the Dungeon, like we just said. Tendai, you've been in the finals twice, but you've mm. never been under the lights. Yeah. What's going through a senior Tendai's head about, wow, this is, you know, this is a pay-per-view box and this is yeah. Mike Tyson, yeah. uh, Michael Spinks level build. You know, you got the, the lineup on the side yeah. under the, yeah. the lights are off. Everybody's got their glow sticks. Kind of right. walk us through what, what are you thinking about being under the lights for the first time? Well, you know, this is, this is huge and what a, what a great moment, especially senior year, new venue, um, you know, and so, uh, I wanted to go out on top, um, and so I wanted to make sure that I, not only did I just, you know, kind of soak it all in, but um, I wanted to make sure that uh, I gave this last match all that I, uh, I could, and, uh, you know, for the sport, um, and then individually just for myself, kind of knowing that this would probably be my last match, um, you know, that I'd ever, you know, get back on a wrestling mat aside from, you know, years later when I didn't know that I, you know, would ultimately be coaching again. Uh, but this was it. This is the culmination of everything. So kind of an emotional time frame. Uh, but I love it. I love the pressure. I love the lights. I love, uh, you know, being in these circumstances. That's when, um, you know, I feel like I really was able to shine and block everything else out and um, just knew what I was there to get a job done and make it happen. Awesome. So here we go with the introductions. Turn down the volume just a smidge. Thing about getting them from the archive. Some yeah, of the volumes yeah. are crazy loud. Some of them are yeah. barely hear them. There you go. So, yeah, didn't have that many matches this year. I was 26 and one, um, and uh, and a lot of those matches because uh, I didn't start wrestling until after the football season. So I got you. short, short season. Oh. Oh. You let him know I'm here to. Yeah. I'm not here to play around, buddy. No, we're gonna we're gonna take it to him. I think you yeah. have the largest biceps of the tournament. <laughs> I, is your head shaved this year? Head shaved, it looks like. So, I'm head shave. Um, so he he's kind of beating me off right now. Uh, nope. Kind of a lazy me. shot there a little bit, but. Um, I was going to get right back up and, and then try to go set him up. Okay, boom. There it is. Str so a little bit stronger on his up, my upper body than him. So you get your two. Yeah. Now he, he's taking some injury time, looks uh, like. Yeah. I, this. So he, referee yeah. signals injury time. Yeah. Like he's, looks yeah. like his shoulder's hurt. Right, yep. right. Right shoulder. So... Here we go. He would say, let's get back at it. He's down. So I'm, I'm thinking my plan of attack, um, my ch my guess is I'll probably go after that, that arm. Let's see if I chop. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think what any good wrestler would do, oh. he's hurt. Injury, Injury time. time. Yeah. And I was disappointed. You see me getting up and shaking my head because... 
you know, I'm like, okay, what's going on here? No. Is he is he truly hurt or? Um, that was his second injury time. The third injury time, if you don't know, terminates wrestling. Yeah. And it'll... So I'm ready. I'm, I think I'm feeling pretty confident. I'm in control of this match. Look, and you go back to it, yeah. and that's it. Yeah. That's it. You win by default. Yeah. Injury default. Yeah. Nothing was unsportsmanlike. Nothing was yeah. dirty. Just good hard wrestling. Yeah. Get your hand raised. Hold up a three. <laughs> you take a bow. I knew it. I knew it was over after that. I bowed out, and uh, that was it. That was, that was, that was it. awesome, man. Yeah. That was absolutely yeah. awesome. Very short match. Yeah. But I think a fitting way to end your career. Yeah. That. I'm not saying that you made somebody quit, but yeah. you were tough enough that somebody's like, I've, I'm done. Yeah. I've had enough. Yeah. And it's kind of like beating a uh, video game boss or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you just know your licks. Yeah. Like, it took me like 25 years to beat Mike Tyson on the punch yeah. on Nintendo. <laughs> and that, you know, you were the Mike Tyson of your weight yeah. class. I yeah. mean, he had those thunder uppercuts, if you yeah. remember. I do. He'd, he'd I knock do. you out. And that's, that's, right. that's kind of what I hearken this to. Yeah. But watching all three of your videos yeah. now, First time in all these years. Mm. Just kind of tell us about what your your memories are of wrestling outside of state championship or even a match or just yeah. what do you uh, what you take away from this? Well, you know, I think uh, a, a lot of things. You, you know, wrestling I think was the first sport for me. You know, it's a while it's a team sport. Um, you know, what you're really battling is yourself. And when I started out wrestling in, in seventh grade. Uh, I remember uh, there was practice, there was times, especially on the losing end, I just wanted to quit. I, I didn't want to keep going. I said, this is, this is physically demanding. This is mentally demanding. Um, and like I said, early on in my career, especially, you know, I took some lumps and bruises and, um, you know, didn't win. Uh, there was, you know, my first season as a seventh grader, I had a losing record. I think I was 14 and 16. And, um, but I also knew that I was a competitor and, and one of the things that I learned, not only just about the, uh, you know, self-discipline, but uh, was that you got to keep battling back from defeat and keep getting better. Um, you know, wrestling taught me so much about work ethic um, and visualization. So, um, you know, wrestling wasn't just about being a physical sport as much as mental as well and being strategic and, and thoughtful and planned. So, um, you know, I didn't have a repertoire of a, a, a thousand moves, but... The ones that I, I did have, I tried to do them well with power and explosiveness. Um, and I was very uh, tenacious and aggressive. And those were things that I had to, uh, you know, uh, continue on throughout my career. Uh, again, uh, learning a lot about just uh, overall self-control as well. So when I first started out in wrestling, um, I, was a, I was kind of like a wild animal. Mm. Um, but by the time I got to my senior year, I learned how to control my breathing. I learned how to control... Uh, that aggression, uh, so I could channel it into the moves and doing the things that I, I needed to do uh, as well. Um, and then, you know, as you continue through, um, wrestling is a sport where, you know, any given time, uh, it doesn't matter what your record is, doesn't matter where you come from, doesn't matter what team you wrestle for, um, you know, you can you can win, you can upset anybody. And so, you know, starting with that sophomore, sophomore year state championship, uh, you know, just realizing that, you know, I can I can do this. And so, you know, as I continue to make progress and set goals each year, uh, ultimately winning a state championship, then I knew the sky was the limit. And it was about not being complacent any time after that. And again, just knowing every time I stepped on that mat, there was a responsibility to uh, the folks and the coaches who had gotten me there, my teammates, and then ultimately to myself as well to, to win that thing and um, just be a natural competitor. You know, and, and that's where I got a lot of joy out of. It uh, didn't matter. Every match, I treated the same. I didn't care who they were. Um, I wanted to go out there and, and dominate the matches uh, that I wrestled in. And so it was, it's been, it was a great experience for me. Uh, and it's something that I've take, taken with me in, in many aspects of my life from that day forward. Getting to watch all these videos and also kind of growing up in the era of video games, you get like especially in boxing games, you can take like a world champion level 
Muhammad Ali versus world champion Mike Tyson. Mm -hmm. Put them in, let your buddies, whatever. I would love to have seen a 1996 era Tendai Cherisika versus a 2000 era George King. <laughs> you talk about a fantasy booking match right there. I think we can make that happen. Though. If you want to see uh, Tendai and George wrestle for like a charity or whatever, put it in the comments. I, I would love to have seen. No, I'm, I'm just messing. Uh, George is, you know, George is one of our buddies. That's right. And yeah. but I think though that would be. And I was talking to uh, Bo Hoffman. You know, watch his video with from Trinity talking about um, he wrestled Josh Muncie in. 2000, Bo won 2000, Josh won in 2001. I was like, hey, let's find us a mat somewhere. That's right. And we'll, you know, <laughs> we'll let the dads go at it. Yeah. And, but uh, there's a lot of guys talking about videos they've seen, people they wanted to see. Yeah. Tendai Cherisika was the name that yeah. everybody was like, hey, yeah. what about, uh, what about, what about Tendai? We, we've heard stories about Tendai. So we've got with Tendai, got his videos. I can't thank you enough, yes. Tendai, for inviting thank me you. to your business yes. here, your Absolutely. office, getting to do the videos. I've got probably about 50, 60 more videos to film. You need to watch the whole series because, like I've said, and all like here on the brackets, the name at the end of a bracket does not tell the story. The banners in the gyms, the rings, those are great, but they don't tell these guys' story, and that's what I've taken so much pride in and enjoyment in is meeting with these gentlemen, letting them see their video for the first time, like Tim out here all three years, first time he's ever got to see it. Yeah. And... I just relish in that, that people are putting their trust in me and you guys are enjoying getting to watch. Wrestling is a kind of a close-knit community. It's get, it's growing bigger, but if you know, you know. If you're if woven in the fabric of wrestling, you know what I'm talking about. You see the same people every week at, in the gyms. Yeah. You see the same people just about, like, I feel like I've been refereeing kids. This is my 18th season. Wow. I feel like I've been refereeing kids, you know, in, since they've been in the uh, – the labor and delivery ward yeah. at the hospital. That's how yeah. long they've been on the mats and seeing their dads, their families, seeing kids grow, and then finally getting to put history, Kentucky history, on display that it just it wasn't out there before. That's right. So that's all we got with Tendai Cherisika, 1994, 1995, 1996 state champion. If you guys have a suggestion who I should do next or somebody you want on the wish list, put them in the comments, and we'll get to them. That's all we got. We'll see you guys on the mats.